My name is Paula Dunn and welcome to the Limited Edition Leadership Show. I'm a cognitive scientist and human behaviour expert and today I am delighted and excited to have with us uh, Yasmin London. Now Yasmin is a cyber safety and digital wellbeing expert and is the director of YSAFE. So welcome Yasmin. Hey Paula, thank you so much for having me on your show today. I'm really excited to be here. And I'm also excited for you to be here. Now, <laughs> I would love to ask you some questions. Um, so what is currently happening in the cyber, cyber world, especially in bullying around, um, you know, in teens, especially during this social isolation? Yeah, look, there's, there's lots of different things happening, uh, but I suppose some new trends that we're starting to see due to everybody having increased isolation and screen time. So uh, one thing that we're sort of starting to see with some kids is that whether they like it or not, they've been thrust into this online environment where we're starting to see, uh, I suppose, different skill sets. Some kids are really experienced with something like, you know, video conferencing or video calling, whereas other kids may have no experience uh, at all when it comes to things like that. And uh, I suppose when it comes to a social hierarchy uh, and people sort of starting to make fun of each other, we're starting mm. to see some trends around ability and experience start to come to the fore as well. Uh, boredom's obviously playing a, a role. Mm. Uh, that's obviously something that happens a lot of the time when it comes to any type of bullying. But when there is boredom, there is practical jokes. Uh, there are ways that they might try to source entertainment. So uh, different ways of doing things creates, you know, different behaviours. So that isolation and that boredom really coupled together uh, causes kids to be a little bit interesting in the way that they want to communicate with others. Uh, interestingly as well, something that I found um, that has come up is a bit of an increase in xenophobia or racism. You've probably mm -hmm. heard of, you know, people, uh, one particular uh, president over in the United States calling it the China virus. Yes. Uh, and it's something that has just started to... I wouldn't say it's trending, but it's something that we've noticed is happening in that there is a little bit of uh, language and commentary around it being, you know, a China virus. So um, I really encourage anybody that hears that sort of language to shut that down really quickly mm. uh, because that's something that we certainly don't want to see uh, increase in any way. Um, those are probably the main things that uh, I suppose are different. Uh, mm. Obviously, everybody's anxiety levels are heightened as well. Mm. So, mm. you know, we're more on edge. We're maybe less sensitive to people. Uh, we're, you know, struggling ourselves with awareness and how we're going to manage ourselves. So, therefore, we have, I guess, a propensity to lash out a little bit more easily. So, those would be the key, key trends, key issues that we're starting to see through COVID. Yeah, yeah, no, I can imagine that. I mean, I'm also getting cabin fever myself. Mm, uh, absolutely. For somebody, and for somebody who likes to be around people and socialise, it's, um, you know, it's, it's one of my worst nightmares. However, absolutely. My husband loves it because he likes being in isolation. <laughs> yeah, isn't it different, the different types of people that are adapting to this in different ways? Like, yeah. I personally, I go really up and down. I have days where, you know, maybe a couple of days where I'm feeling really good as long as I'm doing my exercise and I'm yeah. doing all of that sort of stuff. And then suddenly I'll dip. I'll have a day mm. where I'm just like, God, this is really hard. You know, I'm a, I'm a person that really loves being around people and, mm. and energy and it's, mm. it is difficult, you know. And funnily enough, you know, as much as we love our families, when all you've got is your partner or your kids, um, you know, it does become a little bit interesting. You, you'll watch them chew their food and you're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it starts yeah. to get a little bit on, on your nerves. So it's, yeah. uh, it's an interesting time. Um, all we can do is take one day at a time, though, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. So just, just speaking on that, what actions can teens take to minimise the impact of, um, I guess, the social social media and the social cyberbullying that has on mm. their men mental health, you know, because yeah. they are isolated at home, especially, especially if they're only children, for example, the only child and left to their yeah. own devices. Look, there's a couple of different things that they can do. I think 
awareness of the fact that this is a really unique situation. I mean, this sounds really obvious, but in our day to day, we can get really busy with all of the things that we have to do, particularly if they're, you know, uh, remote learning and they're trying to deal with mum and dad who are also working. We can kind of just, you know, try to get on with things without being mindful that this is a really different situation. It's not business as usual. So a little bit of sensitivity and kindness uh, to yourself and others with that in mind would be the first thing that I would say. Mm. Um, also making sure that you're, I guess, through this time, curating your feeds if you're on social media, be really mindful of who you're allowing to influence your thoughts and processes. So mm. if you're following people who are really catastrophizing and you're just watching the news where, you know, by nature that's got to be quite tantalising, it's often a negative news cycle, mm. sometimes it's fake news. Be yeah. really mindful of the sites that you're following and the information that you're feeding yourself because sometimes it can be really harmful. Uh, and also, you know, really focusing on people that inspire you, that make you feel connected, uh, finding ways to find your people. So we were talking uh, just previously about lots of virtual coffee groups or mm. friendship mm. groups that are starting to come up. Actually taking the step to involve yourself in those every now and again so that you can connect with people and just have a normal chat is really, really beneficial. So for mm. kids, you know, I know a lot of the schools are doing that through say Google Hangouts and, and through their sort of classes. So just jump on. Um, you might not feel like it at first, but I, I guarantee you by the time you get off, you'll feel better for connecting with, with your friends. Mm. Uh, making sure as well the simple things, have your privacy settings on uh, if, if you're using social media so that random people can't just connect with you. Obviously, with, you know, increased isolation, we're, we're seeing an increase in uh, strangers and, and online predators, I guess, trying to seek out vulnerable kids. That's yeah. their MO. So just being mindful. You don't need to be scared. But just being mindful of people's motivations and why they might be trying to get in touch with you. Uh, and the most important one of all, take time away from the screen. Uh, mm -hmm. We're allowed to go out for exercise make sure you do that every day, get out in the sunshine, uh, reset yourself uh, and just take that break time. You know, I always say mo movement is medicine. Mm. Uh, so getting away from the screen and just making sure that you're moving your body will increase your well-being dramatically. Mm, no, they're really great advice. Um, I guess some of the things I found when I've been um, working with teens as well is, yeah, that, that, um, overthinking and that catastrophizing and the ruminating of things and especially yeah. now when they're sort of isolated or on their own and mm -hmm. only having to you know not having that physical contact to be able to pick up all the um, social cues and the body language um, yes. it's easy for them to to amplify those those particular feelings and sort of start mm, hallucinating things that that don't actually you know mean yeah. you know yeah. adding meaning oh. to things that don't Actually, absolutely yeah, that way. In the absence of information, our brains do crazy things, right? Mm. You know, when we're left alone with our thoughts, it can sometimes, you know, you do ruminate on things and you can get fixed. So it just is important to just break that flow, whatever it might be. You know, we've suggested to lots of kids and also their parents to work in 90 minute cycles. That mm -hmm. tends to be the optimum amount of time where you can concentrate and focus, but before you sort of hit that fatigue, uh, yes. and when you're hitting fatigue, your mental health does, and you, I guess your general well-being just starts to decline a bit. So it's just yeah. about taking control of those little things and mm -hmm. scheduling them in as much as you can. Yeah, no, fantastic, fantastic. And so how can parents help with understanding any of the unspoken signs of, you know, what's going on for their teen, especially with this cyberbullying and the parents are consumed by maybe they've lost their jobs or they're working from home as well and they're wanting to make sure that, you know, they've got more than one child to look after and all these yeah. things. So what can they do to sort of get yeah. that up? Yeah. Oh, uh, look, it's incredibly hard. What what yeah. we're asking parents to do at the moment, uh, and I would put myself in this same boat, it is absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to managing your kids, I guess just those micro conversations, I'm a really big fan of micro conversations. 
about how they're going, what's bothering them, what's going well. That can be as simple as a 10 minute conversation around the dinner table at night time or when you're having morning tea or recess, uh, you know, for them, depending on the age of the kids as well, how much they want to say, uh, you never know. But yeah. just opening the door for that conversation is really important. Um, for kids, you know, structure is really important. So you will hopefully have those moments, those little break times that you can interact. Uh, I think it's really important for parents as well to educate themselves on what to do if cyberbullying occurs and to be aware of what it actually is. Uh, I speak to so many parents that just think cyberbullying is just someone speaking nastily towards another person, but it's actually behaviours. It can be a range of different things. It can be someone creating a fake account in someone else's name. It could be using social media to, you know, create a poll and compare one person's picture to another person's picture. Uh, it can be isolating people from from WhatsApp groups, for example, and that's something that we see a lot of, yeah. particularly when it comes to maybe your lower sort of secondary school aged kids, sort of seven, eight, nine, that isolation, you're not included in this chat group. Uh, and then when we sort of see them get a little bit older, the trends that we start to see are including people in a chat group where something may have been said about that person that's negative or hurtful. So it's that control dynamic. Uh, so I, get, I think it's just an awareness of the fact that cyberbullying is, is, is quite big these days. It's not defined just as mean, nasty words. Mm. Uh, so having an understanding about that and what to do. So if a child is willing to come to a parent and actually say, look, this mm. is happening, they're looking for someone to not take control but to help them feel empowered. So if you have a parent that goes, oh, you know, I don't really know what to do about that, I don't really know about Instagram, um, just turn it off compared to a parent that goes, right, that's cyberbullying behaviour, I know what I can do about that. Let's take a screenshot of that conversation and let's, let's first report it to that platform so that we can make sure that this account's shut down or deactivated or suspended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then if it gets really bad, I also know what to do. How about we report it to the police or we report it to the e-safety commissioner and here's some information, you know, from them that I've read before. You know, it takes preparation, you know, absolutely. No parent's going to be standing there with, you know, the thing ready to go. But it's just about having an understanding of what some of those steps might be to resolve the issue because mm. kids want to feel like there is a resolution, that there is some sort of action taken. Uh, but also for that parent to be guided by what that child says they need. So there's often cyberbullying instances where parents will be heavily on the front foot and, you know, after a few days or after a few sort of steps, that child is quite happy with the resolution, but the parent still wants blood because, you know, this other person has hurt my child or yeah. their parents haven't responded in the way that I expect. Uh, so just be guided by your child and, and ask them, what would you like to see out of this? What's the best case scenario? And go from there. Yeah, yeah, that, they're really good points because uh, I found that when I've, um, you know, when par parents have, um, I guess, employed me to come and, and work with their kids, especially if they're being bullied in some capacity, um, it's like I'm the, uh, I guess, I play a bit the, the role of Switzerland because it's like the parent, you know, the, the child will be upset um, over something that's happened. So then they contact their mum, their mum becomes reactive and upset and so it's like they're both coming coming mm -hmm. at me for that um, that support. And it's yeah. like although the, the 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 child wants to be helped, but they don't want to be um, I guess the, the the parent coming in and going to the school and saying do this do that because mm. at, often at times I don't know with your experience, but often at times it actually makes it worse for that child because it's Absolutely. like you know facing even though in it's like even in the workplace when you're trying to do mm. the right thing and you're escalating a particular um, bad behaviour in the workplace, yeah. and what ends up yeah. happening is you end up yeah. becoming the victim, you know, and being Absolutely. victimised. So yeah. I, I feel, um, yeah, so so I guess what I tend to do is my role is trying to diffuse the situation and, and come from different perspectives, mm -hmm. which is not more often not the case that happens when, you know, when there's emotions involved. So mm. it's like taking out the emotional side and Absolutely. being more rational and having that step-by-step -step framework in which, like you say, um, when giving them 
solutions because at the end of the day, it's the emotions um, overpower us because we we feel helpless. We feel yes. helpless. We don't. We're Absolutely. not in. Control. We're not in control. But to get the control is is getting being educated and understanding yeah. what our rights are, what our responsibilities are, and what things mean. So I think yeah, definitely. Um, mm. Those really yeah, couldn't agree more. I think that you're exactly right. Control is what is lacking in these situations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a parent, it's incredibly hard when your child is, is being attacked and they're upset and you want to just fix it. Yeah. And it's not one of those situations that can be a really quick fix. And mm -hmm. so involving your child in that conversation, just saying, look, darling, what do you want from this? Like, do you just want it to stop? Do you mm -hmm. want it to, you know, if it's happening with two people in school, you know, what would you like me to do? Do you want yeah. me to speak to the teacher? Just try and listen to them a little bit. Um, obviously, their age uh, will depend on the response that they want, but, yeah. you know, they need to feel heard. We know so often that when cyberbullying incidents occur uh, or any adverse incidents in the online world, often kids will not report that to their parents or carers because they fear the response will be worse than the problem. So that means mum and dad goes absolutely bananas and wants blood, or it could be they go, right, the internet's terrible, we're taking your phone away, or we're taking the social media platform away. Yeah. And that's not what they want. So yeah. that key little moment where you just ask, like, what is it that you'd like me to do? What would be mm -hmm. the most helpful thing I could do for you? And let mm -hmm. them answer you and listen. Yeah, no, that's really great. I think I wish I wish you were around when I was little because um, you know I endured six years of bullying in primary mm. school myself, um, and that was before the internet had you know and social media. So I I don't know how I could survive um, these days. But it's great to have people like you uh, that 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 are batting for for the teens, you know, and helping them 100%. out and and helping the the, the schools out with navigating this um, difficult terrain. Um, and parents so so how can we find you and if people want to learn more about what you and your organization does yeah look uh, we're as easy as a website away so it's www.ysafe.com.au and it's a y-s-a-f-e mm -hmm. uh, we do a range of different things so uh, at our core we just want young people in particular as well as parents and uh, support staff in schools teachers to have positive relationships with technology so for us you know digital well-being is is comprehensive it's it's everything from online safety to maintaining, you know, important, um, good mental health and, and physical health to complement that, to maintain connection and meaningfulness. All of those sorts of things are threaded into our presentation. So we speak to kids as young as kindergarten kids all the way up to year 12. Uh, we try to really listen to them as well. So we have a lot of groups of kids that we're involved with that do have input into the content that we share. Mm -hmm. uh, we also recently, as a, a result of COVID, uh, we've created some online learning inductions for parents, students and for schools to try mm -hmm. and help them manage the transition to remote learning, mm -hmm. as well as a massive par uh, parent portal as well. So we were getting a lot of parents coming to us, obviously saying, how do I manage this? What do I do if my child comes across something inappropriate? So uh, we've got mm -hmm. a, a gigantic platform with lots of information for them there as well. So so uh, just contact us on the website or you can get in touch directly. My email is yasminlondon at ysafe.com.au uh, and people can just get in touch uh, with whatever they need help with. Okay, fantastic. And look, once again, it was a pleasure to have you on the show today, Yasmin. I know you're extremely busy. So um, I hope everyone found it of value and please do connect with Yasmin um, you know, as you need to, and, and she obviously is a fountain of knowledge and, and um, wealth for cyber safety. And so, yeah, so thank you for today. Thank you. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks, Paula. It's been great to chat to you. No worries. Thank you.